In just hours before Obama's speech last night, the Iranians captured 10 U.S. sailors. And uh, those on the left are saying, well, you know, this all was resolved very quickly thanks to the Obama-Iran deal. Those on the right say, well, this shows that Iran is still an enemy because they held our sailors at gunpoint and made, used them to make propaganda videos. Josh, who's right? Um, actually, neither. Uh, what it is is it's, it's embarrassing to the U.S. Navy. Um, this was a fuck up and there's sort of no question about that. What, what is bad though is that the Iranian Navy should have never encountered just those boats. They should have encountered those boats and then a much larger ship. You know, I think part of it was, you know, the, the Navy should have never allowed any foreign power, Iran or France to, uh, intercept and, and take control of any of our vessels. Um, and I do think that, I mean, some, things like this have happened before. I remember, I think it was last year, it was uh, a couple British guys got stuck in some Iranian waters, spent a day on the boat, and then were turned back over. Um, so, I mean, this is just sort of, uh, I mean, it, it's good for Iran in that it makes them look gracious like, oh, we could have said they were spies or whatever, like we always did because we were crazy. But look, here you go. We're, fr we're friendly now. So I think that it was a good PR win for Iran and, and, a, and a screw up for the U.S. Navy. Well, Peter, to Josh's point, they shouldn't have been there like that. Do you buy the official story that they just drifted into Iranian waters? Oh, uh, I'm very skeptical. Um, none of us are ever going to really know uh, what happened there. But in order for the American story to be bulletproof, we're going to have to believe that those ships had no GPS, no compasses, no navigational charts, um, and that they were crewed by incompetent people. Um, we're also going to have to believe that the so-called mechanical difficulties that caused them to uh, drift in a mile into Iranian waters apparently happened to both boats simultaneously. Um, we're also going to have to believe that that drift, uh, the Persian Gulf is not a particularly choppy set of water, um, you know, that the boat's rudders were also disabled in some way, that they couldn't delay their, their float into the Iranian waters. We're also going to have to believe that they didn't send out distress signals, that the Navy didn't have another boat in the narrow confines of the Persian Gulf that could have gone over there, that there were no helicopters, there were no aircraft. I mean, there's an awful lot of stuff just that we have to believe is true. To what you're saying is when they were released, we're told they just got right back on the boats and left on the boats. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that was thrown out uh, yesterday was they were being held overnight because it wouldn't be safe for them to uh, drive the boats back in the dark. Um, first of all, that makes no sense. I mean, if nothing else, the, the Navy would send somebody to, to, you know, to put a flashlight in their face and drive them back. Um, the other thing, and if you saw the video uh, that's posted at latest.com of the uh, two ships, one of them is painted entirely flat black. Um one could wonder if that ship was designed to run uh, in the dark, uh, things like that. I'm going to guess, and it's really just pulling it out of the air, that this was uh, an attempt to uh, keep an eye on something uh, there. This was near Farsi Island where the Iranians have a, a naval base. It was either a force recon team that was sent out to take a look. It was a SEAL team that was sent out to take a look. Or it could have been a probe of the Iranian defenses to see what they were going to do. But to buy the story that this was all some wacky accident, um, you know, run by McHale's Navy, uh, there's too many questions to just take that swallow it whole. Yeah, well, I mean, regardless of what happened, the situation was resolved in a day, which makes it very different from previous altercations with uh, Iran. Eric, could this have happened if the U.S. had an open lines of communication with the Iran nuclear deal? And does this signal less adversarial relations in the future? Well, I was joking in our last week's episode that uh, the U.S. make a switcheroo and suddenly start to buddy up with Iran. Maybe this is the start of something like that. I'm not saying overnight they're going to suddenly be friends, but... The idea that Iran did a token of goodwill here and gave the Navy back without too much of a problem, I think that does show that maybe the relations are thawing a little bit and that there could be a switcheroo coming up. Switcheroo, okay. Well, we did get the 10 sales well, before back quickly. I just, okay, go ahead, Josh. Uh, I just wanted to, I just wanted to um, 
respond to what Peter said, too. Um, and while everything he said is entirely plausible and, and in fact, slightly likely probable, um, one thing that I, I, I don't think gets stressed enough because uh, people – you know, have the attitude about the military that they do. And, and for the most part, it's correct that it's a, it's a force of professionals doing the job they're told to do. Um, but a fuck up of this magnitude is not surprising to me as someone who served for eight years and in two foreign theaters. Again, there are some questions, but I'm just saying that it's, I don't, I don't agree with the premise that it is, uh, not possible for this to be a screw up. Um, you know, I, I think it's, you know, I could see this being a screw up and that just being what happened and it being embarrassing. I could also see what Peter said, like, you know, testing the border, seeing how porous it is, um, and so on, you know, also being true. But absent any evidence to the contrary, a, a screw up you know, especially the terribly bad timing of it. Like, again, you if this were some sort of a uh, mission, unless it was completely pressing, why do it the night of the State of the Union? You know, because, again, if you get caught, you have that embarrassing moment of, well, shit, you know, I'm here talking about how Iran in the speech is good, but they have 10 of our guys. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense, but I don't know. Let me throw one thing out there that, that might add to, to explanation to, one, why it happened uh, last night, and, and two, why it was resolved so quickly. We know that inside of Iran, there are, like in the United States, there are uh, forces that are in favor of this nuclear agreement and forces that are opposed to it. Generally, the secular government, uh, the elected president of Iran, is in favor of it. And the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, which ran the nuclear program, is generally not in favor of it. It was the Revolutionary Guard that took the Americans uh, hostage, or whatever you want to call it, last night. In fact, they may have done that quite thoughtfully, specifically because it was going to be high profile, hoping to embarrass their secular leadership, maybe embarrass uh, the United States, maybe give the Republicans in Washington something to, to play with, what have you. Then the next morning when the civilian government found out about it, I doubt anybody called Tehran and said we're about to, uh, you know, take 10 Americans into custody. Um, you know, in the morning when the secular government found out about it, they got control of the situation and got the men uh, and one woman released as, as soon as possible. Again, we'll never know the truth, but there's at least 10 explanations for every side of the coin in the Middle East. 